Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment of our program brought to you by Madisonville Marine, and they are going to be at the East Tennessee Fishing Show this Thursday through Sunday. That is at the Expo Center on Merchants Drive, right at the end of Merchants Drive here in Knoxville. They also have rebates right now going on, and they'll have them through the boat show. $1,000 and up on select models of Hurricane Deck Boats, Stingray Boats, Sweetwater Godfrey Pontoons, Skeeter Boats, Suncatcher Pontoons, and G3 boats. Now that's pretty good. That's a lot of rebates. That's a lot of money you can save. Madisonville Marine, check them out at the East Tennessee Fishing Show Thursday through Sunday this week at the Expo Center on Merchants Drive. All right, let's take a look over at our wall of hoops. And you can see up there, they're now, Tennessee now 13 and five. When we started this, they were 10 and four. That first upper left quadrant, they've gone through it. We broke the last 16 games into four game spots, four game blocks. They went three and one in a block that had three road games. Now that's pretty, that's pretty solid work. Uh, the idea of this was to help people get off the, the roller coaster a little bit so you're not expecting them to go 16 and 0. What I found this week after the Missouri loss though was no one expects them to go 16 and 0 anymore. They expected them to go 4 and 0 four straight times. So it really didn't, the, the, the idea of helping, of, of helping understand and, and not freak out over losses really didn't work. Now when we started this, and we said Tennessee, if they went three and one in each block, they'd be 22 and eight heading into the SEC tournament. That would get them in the NCAA tournament right there with that number. If they went two and two in each of those blocks, they'd hit the SEC tournament at 18 and 12 and still alive for a berth. Well, by going three and one now, if you go two and two the rest of the way, now you're 19 and 11 at worst. I think you're in even if you lose your first round of the SEC tournament at that point. So that if you can just split the rest of the way, I know people won't look at that and applaud, but you've put yourself in a pretty good position now. If you can split the rest of the way and get to 19 and 11, you're good. And if you still pull off these three and ones, you can get to 20, 22 and eight on the season. This next pod, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, Vanderbilt and Iowa State this week, LSU and Ole Miss, you got three games at home. And the one on the road, you're on the road, but Iowa State isn't a great team. They could be, they're a good team, not a great team. I think their RPI is around 100. Uh, but anyway, this could be one where you stack up some wins and further help your cause in this next block ahead. Now, I had somebody this week after the Missouri game tell me that they were tired of Tennessee losing to inferior opponents. Well, let's take a look at who they've lost to, all right? You got five losses on the season. You're 13 and five. All of the losses have been by nine or fewer, most of them much closer than that. Uh, there are the records of the teams you've lost to. 18 and 1 for Villanova, 16 and 4 for North Carolina, 13 and 6 at Arkansas, 13 and 6 at Missouri, and Bruce Pearl finally has Auburn cooking down there, 17 and 2. You see the RPI. Three of your losses are to teams in the top 10 going into yesterday's game, yesterday's games. Arkansas was 27 going into yesterday, Missouri 33. You look at Tennessee, their records right there. RPI is the same. So in in terms of losing to inferior foes, I do not see it. There are no bad losses yet for this team. Now you may have some coming up. But if you're looking for teams, you go, oh, that's one that hurts the, hurts the resume. They don't have one. So they haven't lost any inferior teams. Those are on the ballpark. And in terms of Arkansas, Auburn, and Missouri, all three were picked ahead of you by, at uh, SEC Basketball Media Days. Now let's talk about what they're doing on the road. I think this is pretty impressive. Now, what you got there the last 10 years, last 10 seasons, uh, their record away from home through January 21st. Okay, so that's each year through January 21st. You see they're 6-3 and three this year. Look down there at those records. That's the best start since five and two in 2009 and 10. It's they're, they're plus four points in their average result when you're on the road. So that's taking losses into account, wins into account. They're plus four. They were minus the last three years. They were plus three in 2013, minus the next two years. The best year you had was at 2009, 10 again. This is your best road team, best road start since that team. The Falls reached the Elite Eight that year. Now. I'm not projecting an Elite Eight finish. I'm just saying that's pretty good company that you're in right now. Uh, and then finally, when you compare Tennessee to the rest of the SEC, in conference road games, Tennessee 2-2, two and two, uh, 13 and 30 is what the rest of the SEC is doing on the road so far. So you're 500, the rest of the league's winning one out of three. Uh, Tennessee's average loss on the road, three points. Their worst loss was four. Their other one was by two in overtime. Other SEC teams are averaging a nine-point loss. Fifteen of the 30 losses have been by double digits. In other words, what you're doing is you are playing better on the road than just about anybody else in the SEC. Gentlemen, if there are, if there are people out there who aren't 
I'm not saying start the confetti yet and then line up the parade because you got plenty more games to go. But if there are people out there who are complaining about what you've seen so far, I don't think they know what they're looking at. This is a for a team that was picked 13th in the SEC. Heck, for a team that was picked fifth in the SEC. I don't care if this team was picked fourth or fifth. They're on pace for that kind of a finish. They're doing a good job. I don't see a lot to complain about. Your thoughts on the start? It's Jimmy. You said they'd win 20 this year. Congratulations. They're <laughs> off to a better start than I thought they would be. Your thoughts on the start for this Tennessee football uh, basketball team? Did you think you'd be sitting here at them 13 and five at this point? No, I mean, I, I didn't think they'd have a chance. I thought they'd be an NIT type team. Um, I thought they were still young. I didn't, I, I didn't have full confidence in the guards. Um, no, I, I didn't think. I, I am ec ecstatic about where they're at and where they're headed. I mean, the fifth youngest team in the country, um, the, the, there's so much optimism around this team. I th they're six and three away from home. But to me, more impressive, you take out the, uh, the neutral game, they're four and two in, tr in true road games. I, I think that's very impressive. It's very impressive. And there's times when Tennessee could have still been looking for that first road win in an SEC set. Yes. And yeah. you've already racked up some. I, and, John, I, I guess this is a little bit off the topic. I'm not crazy about going to Iowa State at the end of January. But I know that's the way it is. That's the SEC Big 12. You don't have to go check. Well, okay. okay. <laughs> Jimmy, your thoughts on this team? I mean, you picked them to win 20, but did you expect them to be this good on the road, to be in all their losses, 13 and 5 at this point? 13 uh, and 5 is not a big surprise to me, but they're better on the road than I thought they'd be. I thought they'd beat Auburn at home. So that, that was one game that I, I missed along the way. But I, uh, the reason I thought this team would win 20 is. They won 16 a year ago. I, typically, Rick Barnes' players get better from one year to the next. And I thought the addition of a couple of guards, Darrington and Daniel, would help them in the backcourt. It gave them more potential point guards. And so I, I thought a four-game improvement was not out of reach. Uh, one other thing that stood out this week, I thought it was interesting. After they lost to Missouri, the SEC Network crew was there. And they threw out. Because, they, look, they're watching 14 teams. So they're looking at thumbnail sketches. That's how it works. You're not. If, if we start talking about later in the show, if we start talking about the Philadelphia Eagles, we're not going to. We're going to be giving you our thumbnail views. We don't know as much as Eagles beat writers, okay? So SEC Network gets into it, and they, the game ends, and the guy says, all right, this team lost a close one at Missouri, a close one at Arkansas, a close one at North Carolina. How much do we have to worry about close games with this team? And I thought to myself, they've won close games as well. Would it be better if they'd had a couple of blowout losses? Because if you had a couple of blowout losses, we wouldn't be talking about, oh, well, these close games. Which, in other words, means that's kind of a – with the way they're playing, if you had nothing – if you had ten close losses at this point and no close wins, all right, I'd be concerned. I'm not concerned at this point. You we'll can, see. You can learn a ton more from a close loss than you can from a 25-point loss. As a program, you can go to the tape and show guys, hey, here are some minor things that if we adjust, we can, we can get a win next time. If you go out and lose by 20, 25 points, you got a long way to go oftentimes. And I thought finishing at South Carolina said something. Kentucky yeah. lost to South Carolina at South Carolina. I thought that was a good way to finish a game that looked like it was slipping away. Yeah. All right, uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, departures from the Tennessee football team. We're going to talk about uh, Holly Warlick. We're going to talk about the Tennessee Titans have a new coach. We're going to play true or false. The buzzers are out. Come on back on the sports horse.